Bass is one of the most important aspects of any electronic dance music track. And I've been spending a ton of time lately on doing bass sound design, getting some really nasty, nasty sounds. So we're gonna do a free tutorial today on building up a bass patch in one of my favorite synthesizers, Native Instruments Massive. Check it out. Okay, so we've got a bit of a backing track here to give our bass a context to work within. So here's what we have so far. So just some super basic beats, a uh, little atmospheric vocal kind of thing going on. And we've got a MIDI track in here with a couple of basic notes, it, which is where our bass will go. So we'll grab an instance of Massive, we'll drop it down. This is how Massive loads by default, and here's our bass line. So it's sounding crapalicious to start off with because we haven't done anything yet. So first thing, go to envelope number four, which controls our master amplitude. We jack the sustain level all the way to the top, which is going to give us a nice long sustained sound. Of course, it's loud, so we're going to turn the master volume down. And your very first thing in my approach that you do is you select which oscillator you're going to use. You don't get complicated with all kinds of other shit before you choose your oscillator and wavetable. So we're going to stick with the one that preloads, which is the saw square one, but we're going to turn the wavetable position knob all the way over to a saw wave. A saw wave is extremely versatile and it's in a lot more places than you might think in dance music. So a lot of uh, patches actually revolve entirely around the saw wave, which is what we're going to do with this one. And I'm going to speak a lot to complexity in bass design because some people get way too complex with their sounds way too quickly. And you can go down this rabbit hole and massive because it is a fairly deep synth that'll take you hours. And then you never end up writing a decent bass line because you're too wrapped up on trying to program your patch before you've done anything else. So I'm going to teach you guys a more Zen kind of simplistic approach to bass design. And we're going to keep it with this oscillator right here. Next thing in order to go into the bass range, we're going to pitch this down. The way I did this is by on the Mac holding down the option key, which allows you to pitch up and down by a whole octave rather than clicking in there with your mouse and dragging slowly up and down. It's very handy. You can go by 12 semitones just like that by holding the option key. On PC, I would assume that's probably the alt key. So here we go. All right, very next, we're going to go over to the OSC tab and we're going to draw in the pitch band amount. So you can see pitch band here and there's zero by default. So we're going to take this and we're going to allow the pitch band to go up and down by 12 semitones. Next thing we're going to do is go into the voicing tab and make sure we're in monophonic mode. Monophonic mode, when you enable that, it means it's only playing one note at a time versus chords. And for bass, you don't need chords. One note is good. And enabling it in monophonic mode will now allow you to use the glide function. Before, if we had it in polyphonic, it would not glide between notes. And gliding between notes is very important. As you can see, what the glide is doing is... Let's put that down. Okay, versus this. It's called portamento or glide. And the time just controls how long it takes. So we're going to put it around there. And that's going to give us basically a nice little glide in between our notes. We're going to go back to our voicing tab and we're going to take now the unisono and we're going to drop this up to a third. Uh, we have three, three unison voices there and immediately you can see how it fattens up the patch. Again, we're only using one oscillator. We're not doing anything funky here. That thin and crappy starting to get fat. And then we click on pitch cutoff, and this is going to pitch the voices a little differently. It's You don't need much here. It's making the patch sound wider. You can also do it with pan position a little bit. Not much. Again, you can go overboard here really quickly, and with bass, you want to make sure. That's good, right around there. Okay, so now here's what we got. Now... You notice we have beats in here, and immediately what's going to happen is our bass is going to be conflicting with our beats. And this is a great opportunity to show you guys the wonderful power of sidechain compression. So we're going to throw a compressor on. We're going to enable this sidechain mode. Now, I use drum racks in Ableton for all of my percussion, and here is one of the big reasons why. 
is if I have a drum loop in here or something out of, coming out of like Native Instruments battery, all the drums are jumbled together in one bus. And if I want to side chain to just the kick, for example, I can't do it. Or you have to get into some really complicated frequency, you know, stuff. But here you see boom, 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 beats. And then I get a second chooser menu and I can choose just my kick. Where's my kick? Where's my kick? Main kick, boom. And now I can side chain the bass to just the kick. Okay, so when that kick slams, it's gonna knock the bass completely out of the way because you can see the bass note and the kick are playing at exactly the same time, which would normally cause a big, fat, muddy low end. So you can see the gain reduction here. It's slamming the bass right out of the way and giving it a nice recovery here. I'm gonna back this off, put it in FF1. FF1 is better for bass side chaining. Bring the attack right down. Now, I actually also want to side chain this to the snare because the snare, this is a big bass patch. It's gonna be taking up a lot of the frequency range. And the only thing that's gonna be going on here other than those airy high vocals is bass and beats. So I wanna make sure the snare really punches through too because this is like glitch hop tempo stuff. And the snare is very important in this broken beat style of music. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate that by pressing Command D. And I'm just gonna go here. The reason why I'm duplicating it is because it copies all the settings. Why drag a new compressor in? You can save a lot of time by just duplicating it. And then we go here, it's selected beats already. And instead of main kick, we go through here to do, 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 do the broken snare. There we go. Okay, listen to the difference. The bass is completely overpowering the percussion versus this. Okay, this is allowing them to play really nicely together and it's moving gently, but definitely audibly, the bass out of the way when the kick and clap or snare happen, okay? So now we've got, with the bass, we've got our oscillator chosen. We've got a little bit of fatness added to the patch. The very next thing I wanna do is I wanna start working with pitch. Again, a lot of people get really carried away with like, oh, let's add in more oscillators and let's do all this crap in massive, like adding effects and things like that before they've really got their sound dialed in. And I think that's kind of putting the cart before the horse. So we're gonna go into our clip envelopes here to see the envelopes, click this. And we're gonna click on pitch bend. And you'll note that earlier we drew in that plus 12 minus 12 semitone pitch bend. Well, this is where we can use it. So it's even pitch bend all the way through. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select and highlight this, click the line and drag it up. That is much easier way to draw in automation, by the way, than, oh, I'm gonna double click here, I'm gonna double click here, I'm gonna double click here. Now, I'm gonna draw in some other ones too. Okay, I like the way this is sounding now. We've got a bunch of pitch bends drawn in. And I'm gonna solo this, and I'm gonna show you guys the difference by putting the glide on, okay? So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go glide time zero. And just check this out. Okay, so that's way too much glide time. That's nothing. And in the middle, we find a nice balance. You know, some of it's being done by the pitch bend, some of it's being done by the, the notes sliding into each other. Okay, so now that we've got our notes and we've got our pitch bends in there and we've got the oscillator, single oscillator, again, sounding pretty fat, now and only now are we gonna move on to the filter. The filter is always what I move to next here. I'm not gonna move into any effects because here's the thing is if you add in effects too early, like you put in a whole bunch of distortion and hard clippers and stuff like that, but you don't have your basic sound sounding fat, it's like putting lipstick on a pig. It's the same old pig, it's the same old pig. You can take it for a stroll in the afternoon. It's the same old pig, it's the same old pig. If it's primped or if you leave it in the nude. Like you gotta make sure that your underlying sound deserves to have that polish put on it before you go and apply all these amounts of effects. So filters are pivotal in sculpting sounds that come out of this synthesizer. So we are going to do some, uh, some tricky sneaky little stuff with filters. So we're gonna go to filter one 
and we are going to enable it as a band pass. And in this case, we're going to bump the cutoff up a little bit. We're going to keep the resonance nice and low, and we're going to jack the bandwidth. Okay. Now, in Massive, each oscillator has the ability to route through filter 1 or filter 2, and you can see we can do that with this slider here. This patch is actually going to revolve around two bandpass filters simultaneously together, kind of ripping the audio apart. And we're going to leave here. This chooser can go between serial and parallel. Parallel will route the audio and split the signal between the two filters. Serial will mean that it goes through one filter, then it goes through the other. We don't want that. We want parallel, and we want an even mix between filter 1 and 2. And then you can see the output mix is evenly set between filter 1 and 2 as well. So this is what it sounds like now with the filter engaged. Watch what happens if we mix it all the way up into filter 1. Okay. That's effectively the bypass signal because filter 2 is not enabled. So we're going to leave the mix nice evenly between the two. Now we're going to enable filter 2, and we are also going to put it as a band pass. We're going to jack the bandwidth all the way up. We're going to give it just a touch of resonance, not a lot, because otherwise it starts to sound like a 303, all acidy, and I really don't like that sound, to be honest. So we're going to move the cutoff here, and we're going to move the cutoff a little bit higher. The idea is you want to get the cutoff a little bit different on both of them, like this, okay? Now we're going to make use of the massive macro function here. We're going to take this macro down here, we're going to drag it right into this slot, and we're going to click and drag up so it'll modulate the filter based on this macro position. Okay. Then do the same thing, and we're going to drag it into this slot. So basically, when I turn this knob, it's going to move the filter cutoff position of both filters. Now, we're going to take, actually, we should probably name this, we'll call this filter pose, filter position. Now we're going to take macro number two, and we're going to drag it as well onto the filter cutoff position, except I'm going to take this one and I'm going to drag it just a touch up and take this one and drag it just a touch down. And what this is going to do is give us the ability to spread our filters out a little bit kind of live in the mix. So filter um, offset is what we'll call that. Okay, so when I turn this up, the filters are going to get just a little bit further apart. Okay, so Okay, so moving the filter position knob definitely has a dramatic effect. Now that we've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch this knob, just give it a little little nudge, and you can see when I'm touching this knob on the bass track in Ableton, it automatically selects massive filter position, which is what I want because now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to actually start doing some track automation on this bad boy. And we're going to expand the track and just give ourselves a little bit of space to work with this. So now I'm going to draw in track automation the same way that I did with the uh, with the pitch band. And I might even follow might even follow the pitch band automation with it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm definitely not going to go hard curve on it like this. I'm actually going to give it some I'm going to give it a little bit of uh, a little bit of curve love here. Unfortunately, Ableton doesn't have curves in its automation. I'm hoping that they will do that in version 9, which would be extremely handy. It's my one thing that I kind of, kind of miss about Cubase. What I don't miss is all the right-click menus, which thankfully Ableton doesn't have a lot of. This is a little bit tedious, so just bear with me here. Yeah, all right. So we're just going to let this play, and I'm going to draw in some kind of randomness here. Okay, now we've got some filter sweeps going on. Now while it's playing, I'm going to play with the filter offset parameter and see what that does for me. bump the resonance a bit. Watch what happens when we put the resonance too high, okay? I just want you to see this. You get that kind of really squelchy, nasally kind of sound, which I really don't like. And I'm just going to keep the resonance nice and low. Okay, so I like the filter offset position right around there. I'm going to try something out here. I'm going to try one 
alternate type of filter here. I'm going to try a probably a daft or an acid. Okay, I like the combination between bandpass and daft filters. It sounds uh, sounds a little bit fatter, in my opinion. So we're going to stick with those guys. Loving it. Okay, so now what's happened with these filters together is they're, um, you know, we're losing a lot of the bass out of the patch, even though it is, we're calling it a bass patch, because these filters are a bandpass filter. The nature of it is it only lets through the frequency, which is at its cutoff point. And... Um, so we're not getting a lot of sub frequency. So this is where uh, Ableton again is a very amazing music production platform. If I want to add in a sub into my patch here, I can just simply take massive. I can press command G or control G on PC and I get an instrument rack now. And now under here, I can take a different synthesizer, for example, another instance of massive. And now I can put in some sub. So I'm going to call that sub. I'm going to call this, oops, where did we go? Rename that, call that top. Okay, so now we've got the sub. And I'm just going to build a very, very, very quick, very simple sub patch for you guys. We're going to jack the level. Sub is down one octave, maybe even two. We'll see. Sub I always do typically with a sine wave. Boom, boom. Okay, we're going to no filters on it. We are purely just going to EQ. We're going to take out any top with the high shelf. We are going to cut any mid. Super simple. We're going to throw in uh, for effects a little bit of a classic tube. Not, not much, just a little tiny bit, tiny bit like that. And uh, that should be good for a sub. So let's check this out. Ah, we forgot to do one thing, didn't we? Which is monophonic mode and pitch bend. We want it gliding and moving around at exactly the same way that the, uh, the top synth is doing. And that's why I use another instance of massive versus an operator or something like that, because synths respond slightly different ways to pitch bend, I find, things like that. So I want this uh, mimicking the top synth exactly so it feels like one synthesizer together. And the nice thing as well about doing this group track method uh, using using an instrument rack and grouping them together is we don't have to make any changes to our compressors. It's not a second track. The compressors are the same. And uh, here we go. The other thing I might want to do now is throw in a bit of an EQ. We'll go with EQ8 just on the top instance of Massive because we now have that bottom one dominating the sub region. So let's just take this and cut this from kind of 60, 70 hertz down. Okay. Now, now and only now do we add in effects because we've got a sound that sounds good. We have filters sweeping through it. We've done the hard work. You know, we've picked a good oscillator. We've sculpted the sound. We've pitch banded it. And uh, now is a great time to add in effects. So the first effect slot here, I usually add in some type of tube because that's going to fatten our sound up give it a bit of harmonics uh, i'm a big fan of the Bronner tube again don't go crazy with your distortion here your tubes um, i'm going to add in a little bit and we'll see how that sounds okay effect slot two i'm going to try out a little bit of chorus ensemble to give it a bit of a even wider sound Maybe try a different chorus, try regular chorus. Yeah, 
Yeah, there we go. Now let's turn the EQ on and let's try sweeping a, a boost frequency through it. Let's go boost. Yeah, 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 liking that. Okay, now we have, uh, if we want, we can throw a little bit of feedback through the filters. Okay, let's turn the feedback up. Okay, clearly too much. Let's try routing it just to filter one. We use the high shelf to take a little bit of the edge off the highs because they're starting to get a little ear piercing. Okay, now we have our insert slots down here. Here is where we can experiment with a little bit of the clippers usually, uh, bit crushers, things like that. Uh, again, you don't want to get too carried away with these guys I find. Uh, let's start off with the hard clipper. Just give it a little bit, added some grit. And again, reducing our volume a little bit as we go up, because each one of these effects is going to add in um, additional perceived volume. And in this last slot, let's try a little bit of the bit crusher. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's take the solo off and listen to this in context and see what we've come up with. So I hope you guys learned something new today that you can use in your own production. If you're really interested in uh, investing the time and taking your production to the next level, I offer more advanced courses via my website. Uh, every month, pretty much, I do a in-depth online masterclass where I teach using Ableton templates, give away some of my own custom samples, and do online education via live streaming webinars. So if you're interested in um, really taking your skills up to the next notch and you want to invest some time, just click the link below and you can check out more information on some of the stuff that I offer. Until then, talk to you soon. <laughs>